Ahoy, matey, and welcome back to another uh, cold episode. On today's episode, we be looking at another plunder deck. This time using the adventure engine. In all reality, I've already done this list, but I decided to, to come back and revisit it because uh, I had a bunch of fun on stream today uh, with this deck, and I had some really cool duels, so I might as well show you it again. Um, yeah, just some really cool duels that I had, basically. Um, let's quickly go by the card by card. Uh, so this is technically using the new ban list, uh, so we are just playing the one cross out. Normally I would play more of this, but uh, we're just playing the one. We're playing one effect failure, double, double maxi, double, or sorry, triple uh, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, the one Nibiru and double Imperm for our hand traps. We're also running the double called by and the one cross out as well. As for the adventure engine, pretty standard. The two Enchantress, the two Ride of Aramisir, the one of Draco back in uh, Wandering Griffin Rider and the Fateful Adventure. And that's it. As for the plunders, we are playing Triple White Beard. This just happens to be the best card to discard off of any of your plunder effects, so that's why we're playing three of it. We are playing Double Red Beard. This happens to be the second best at discard, and you can special summon it off of the white to get extra advantage. And overall, it doesn't really do much other than just kind of like be good as a like normal summon or. Yeah, it doesn't really like get your combo started in any way, uh, but it's very good as a follow up, so. There's that. We're playing Triple Blue Beard, Blue Beard, and any other normal summonable uh, plunder. The name somehow escaped me. Uh, <laughs> is basically full combo there, and you can even go into a Bahamut Shark, which is very nice. Uh, we also have a Golden Hair. We are running uh, Triple Golden Hair as well, because this is also a one card starter. It gives you a normal summon it, go into Al Mirage, special summon it back by discarding a card, and then go into your Black Beard, which is technically full combo. Uh, and then the last card we have is Black Eyes, which is also a pseudo full combo with something like a Bluebeard. If you are able to just like normal summon Bluebeard and then link it to Almorosh and then bring back uh, or add it back to hand with the Black Eyes. So it's very nice overall to have that one. Uh, as for the spells and traps, we are running the the one terraforming to search out Shipyard. We are running the one Ship Shape Shape Ship 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 Shape Ships Shipping. Uh, which allows us to fusion summon it into our lists, as well as it allows us to banish it from grave in order to equip to one of our ships a, uh, or, or just any one of our plunders, one of our uh, plunder cards, just any of our plunder cards. We are also playing uh, Emblem of the Plunder Patrol. Now, this card is very unique. Uh, what it does is basically it allows you to send... Um, Send this card to the graveyard to special summon a plunder monster from your extra deck with the same attribute as a monster on the field or in the graveyard. Now, what that means is that you can send a card to the graveyard to go into something from your graveyard. Meaning, if you have something like an Ash Blossom or an Effect Veiler in your graveyard, you are able to tag out into a brand or a list, respectively. That is really solid and adds for that extra recursion. This only is played at one, given the fact that you do need to have a plunder as well as the material in grave. So sure, if you have a plunder but no material in grave or on the field, all you're going to be able to go into is a Blackbeard, which isn't all that great. It's very good for follow-up, which is why we're playing it uh, in order to get it off of the ship shape. That's mostly why it's played. It is good just overall as well, because it does give a boost as well as target protection. Um, so it's a little, it's 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 okay. Um, not the greatest, but okay. And then we have the triple shipyard. Shipyard is the heart and soul of the deck. It basically is what allows you to go for the hard uh, OTKs as well as just continue your combos. You discard a card to add a plunder patrol card from your deck to your hand. Um, also, if it's in the grave, you can target a plunder patrol spell card in your spell and trap card zone. Set this card... Uh, and then if you do return that target to the hand. So what's really cool about this is that the card doesn't have to stay on the field. You can literally just set this card. And if the card that was targeted ends up getting destroyed, it's still going to go back, uh, which is very nice. Um, yeah, all in all, a pretty solid effect. And then the one booty. Booty can be searched off of the shipyard and it basically just allows you to constantly recur your plunders and uh, change the attribute of monsters your opponent controls to more easily go into things like your brand, your Moark, or your Liss. Moving on, we do have the extra deck. We have the two lists, which is a monster negate, as well as extra recursion. Now, one thing to note is that if you do not end up destroying the card that is negated with the effect of the list, so it negates a monster by discarding a plunder and then destroys it, but if you don't destroy it, you don't get to add a plunder card 
if it is equipped with a uh, with a plunder. Um, so do keep that in mind. I actually did this effect against Eldritch several times to negate the Eldritch graveyard effect, and uh, I didn't get to add a card because it was already in the grave. It wasn't destroyed, so there you go. Um, as for the first effect, it's absolutely crazy. Being able to just quick effect summon another monster is a very solid. Moving on, we have the Bran, just being able to boost up here all of your fiend type monsters as well as discard to target a spell or trap your opponent controls and banish it and then add a plunder patrol card from your deck to your hand very nice uh oh sorry a plunder patrol monster this one's card this one's monster and this one is a spell or a trap so uh you discard a plunder to target an effect monster your opponent controls this came up once in one of our duels where i couldn't banish a um a non-effect monster basically uh so yeah do keep in mind it is an effect monster so you can't banish like a face down you can't banish uh like a token or something like that um but yeah and then you add a spell or trap from your deck to your hand um it's also a quick effect just like bran if it is equipped with something also, also, if it is a, it, or if it has materials underneath it, so for example, you actually hard summoned this, which honestly is probably the worst way to do this, um, but if you do, it basically becomes very similar to something like a Dingirsu, where it just adds that protection for your plunder cards. Next up, we have the Bahamut Shark, which can be made with any two of your, um, your plunders, as long as you are not locked into plunders. Uh, and then you can use them to go into Totally Awesome, which is another Omni Negate. And then, of course, Zayas. We have the one Almirage to link it off for the Golden Hair or the Bluebeard or occasionally Redbeard. Uh, the Triple Blackbeard. Do you need to play Triple? No. It never came up that I actually needed all three. Um, so, there you go. You can play it with two. It is very helpful to have that third one. Uh, just for those grindy games. And then the one Nightmare Unicorn and the one Access Code to give us the Access Code line. That's it for the deck. Let's hop into the replays and see how this deck performs. Before we get on to the rest of the video, did you know that 70% of the people who watch my content aren't subscribed? If you end up liking the content, consider subscribing. You can always unsubscribe later if you end up not liking it. Anyway, let's get on to the rest of the video. All right, so here we are going second and uh, I drew the card. Do you have the out? Um, they're playing the Endymion stuff. I just decide to activate my maxi here because I don't want to hold it in my hand any longer. So, yeah. And I, I wouldn't be able to, like, stop them or summon... Basically, I wouldn't be able to activate my maxi in response to a special summon because they could pendulum summon. Uh, so, yeah, that's why I do this the way that I do. Uh, they're going to draw a card. They're going to activate their uh, Citadel. They're going to go for... Spell power magister or mastery. They're gonna add some more cards. They're gonna activate their effect in order to special summon out to the Endymion as well as the reflection of Endymion. Um, so yeah, we know Endymion is a spell trap. Negate, and we have no spells in our hand. Uh, and we draw for turn the third Bluebeard! All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to activate the Golden Hair effect in order to special summon itself by pitching a Bluebeard. Bluebeard's going to pitch another Bluebeard to draw another Maxi. Then we're going to special summon out the Bluebeard, which they will then activate their uh, hand effect of the um, Garuda to bounce the monster back. And, I'll, and uh, I'm going to Maxi just to draw a card. We end up drawing Ash Blossom, which is very funny. But then I'm going to normal summon again the Bluebeard in order for us to go into a Blackbeard. We're going to go Blackbeard because they give us the light and the dark, and we are going to go into Morik. We end up drawing the Faithful Adventure, which is very funny. Um, and they are going to negate that with their Endymion by bouncing one of their cards back. Then I'm going to activate my Morik in order to banish their other monster uh, so that we can grab up Shipyard as well as activate the effect in order to go into Redbeard uh, from the Whitebeard. Then we can pitch the Water Enchantress that we had in hand to go for Golden Hair that was in the grave. We're going to link these two off, or sorry, not link, uh, synchro these two off for a Bran. Bran is going to then be equipped with the Redbeard, and we're going to activate the Water Enchantress as well to grab Rite of Aramis here. We're then going to activate the Bran in order to banish their uh, Spell Trap and grab up Black Eyes since we haven't used it thus, thus far. We're then going to return the Redbeard to the hand to get, get the Shipyard that was in the grave that we sent off of the uh, Bran or the Moark or something uh, in order to set it back onto the field. Uh, and then we can actually activate it in order to boost up our monsters. The reason we needed to do this is because it boosts up your monsters by 500 attack for each Planet Patrol card in your spell or in tra and trap zone. So this allows us to get over the Endymion. At this point, the game is pretty much sealed. We have a... Um, well, I'll just show you. Uh, we're going to discard the... Uh, the... 
Rite of Aramisir that we ended up grabbing in order to grab the booty. Now we have a Black Eyes as well on our field. We're going to walk over with the Bran in order to, uh, or sorry, they're going to grab the Spell Power Mastery. We're going to set the booty. We are going to then link off into Blackbeard. And I know what you're thinking. Why did you not keep Bran? The reason for that is because this is not a quick effect to uh, banish. So if I go into the Blackbeard, we can go into a another Bran. Since we have the booty, we can change the attribute of the opponent's monster in order to bring back a, or in order to tag out into a Bran, which can then have the quick effect speed to banish a spell or trap, uh, which would then give us a quick Quick effect, banish, spell or trap, and a quick effect, banish, monster, which is very good against Pendulum. So that is the overall plan. Uh, they are going to go to main phase one. They're going to activate their Pendulum. I drew, uh, uh, I mean, I drew off of the Maxi, the Ash Blossom. Feels bad for them, uh, but I'm going to de declare fire. We're going to go for the Bran. We're going to tag out once again for another Bran, and my opponent realizes that the game is over and concedes. All right, and here we are once again going second, and I drew Imperm, because, uh, reasons. Okay. That's the only hand trap that I drew. Uh, but we are playing up against Evil Eye, so I'm like, okay, there's a fair chance that I am able to do this just with the one Imperm. What else could they possibly have in hand? Uh, turns out they have the Evil Eye of Selene, which is absolutely crazy for them. So, uh-oh. Uh, yeah, they're now at 2600, and I genuinely don't have a good way of dealing with this at the moment. So I'm going to start with the Rite of Aramisir in order to add to our hand the Adventure Token. Then we are going to activate the Terraforming, which of course they have the Ash Blossom for. Now, if I had a way to get into my Adventure, or sorry, into my Plunder Patrol cards without needing this Terraforming, I would let it go through because I want to keep the Ash Blossom in the grave so that I can banish the Selene. Alas, I cannot do that. So I have to end up called buying it, uh, which means that it's now banished, which means I can't use it to tag out our monsters. I'm going to activate the effect of the Fateful Adventure here in order to uh, add the Griffin Rider and pitch our uh, Water Enchantress. I'm going to activate the Wandering Griffin Rider in order to special summon itself, and they're going to pop our token. That's okay. We're going to add the Draco back here as well as a discard uh, for discard fodder. Uh, we're going to add the Rite of Aramisir as additional discard fodder, just in case. Uh, we're going to pitch ourselves the Draco back in order to go for the Golden Hair, which is a one-card combo. So we're going to go into the Almirage here and then use the effect in order to pitch that right that we searched to go for a Blackbeard. So out comes the Blackbeard. We're going to use the Blackbeard in order to go into Mowork, and we end up drawing in an insane draw with uh, Black Eyes. So we're going to go Black Eyes, add back the Golden Hair, and then we are going to link those two off into another Blackbeard for the following turn. We're going to set the Booty and Pass. Now, Booty actually doesn't do anything because this card is currently untargetable thanks to the uh, Evil Eye of Selene, if you didn't know that. Uh, they're going to activate their effect, and they are going to... Or, sorry, in the standby phase, they're going to activate their effect, and then they are going to chain to their standby phase effect, which is to destroy a card you control, and they are going to target one of our special summoned monsters and destroy destroy it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to target my own Mowork in order to go into a different Mowork just to dodge the effect so that we can keep that Mowork on field. They're going to pop their monster and then activate their Eye of Selene uh, to pay a whole bunch of... Uh, sorry. Uh, to basically boost up their monster a little bit more, but now they're down to 6k. They're going to Radian over our Mowork, which I don't really care about, but okay, um, in order to go for the Catabolipus. Uh, or sorry, they activate their Evil Eye of Domain in order to go for the Catabolipus. They're going to then activate their Gorgonio in order to go for Evil Eye Defeat. Evil Eye Defeat, if you don't know, it basically just bounces cards. And if you have it in a Evil Eye of Selene, you can go for two instead of one. It's basically an archetypal combos. Uh, they're going to bring back their Catabolipus, which was their biggest mistake, because guess what? I can target it, which means I can bring back my Blackbeard and make it a fire. They're going to go for Gor Gorgon, Empress of the Evil Eyed which is a terrible, terrible decision because one, it gets their unaffected or untargetable monster off of the field, as well as getting their evil eye of Selene off of the field with no real way to uh, get it back. Don't know why they did this, but they did. Um, and anyway, that's going to be the end of the game because I go for the fire here. I'm going to bring out the black eyes because that's basically all that I have. They're going to go for the evil eye defeat and bounce the black eyes, but that doesn't really matter because Bran comes out anyway. We're going to go for the Bran here and they realize that the game is basically over and scoop it up. Uh, uh, odd choice. All right, so what does this deck do going first? Well, I'll show you. First of all, we're going to start off with the Wandering Griffin Rider. They show us their max C, and I am going to call by that because uh, no. 
Uh, we're going to special summon out the Wandering Griffin Rider, and then we are going to activate the, the Shipyard, and then I'm going to activate the Fateful Adventure in order to uh, search and discard the Water Enchantress, because for some reason, that's something you can do. We're going to grab up the Water or the Rite of Aramisir in order to grab our token, and then we are going to activate the effect of the Fateful Adventure in order to grab the Draco back, which we will then discard off of the Shipyard in order to grab our White Beard. We're then going to equip the uh, Draco back and special summon out our Blue Beard. Uh, we're going to link those two off into Blackbeard, summon out the Redbeard, and pass. So, what does this board do? Well, first of all, with Fateful Adventure, our monsters are likely to not be able to be be destroyed. Uh, each time, or sorry, the, once per turn, the first time a monster you control equipped with an equip spell would be destroyed by battle, it is not destroyed, including all of the ships that are equipped with the effects of our plunders. So, we're pretty safe from... Uh, from any sort of battle damage. Also, if they go into a white water, a light, a dark, or a fire, we can use both the uh, black beard effect to tag out and draw a card, as well as the red beard effect to tag out as well, and equip both of these guys to those monsters, allowing us access to our extra deck, as well as additional advantage. On top of having an Omni Negate and a Draco back as protection slash additional follow-up. Um, we also have the white beard in grave if it comes up. Turns out they're playing Adhara. This is not very good for us because it's an Earth! Earth and Windship when They're going to go for their Droplet and negate our two monsters. However, they didn't negate Redbeard. So I can still actually just tag out right now into our Blackbeard. The reason I go for the Blackbeard off of our Redbeard when they reveal their Moye is because Blackbeard can use the other Blackbeard in order to go into a different attributed monster. So that is the plan with that. Uh, we still haven't used the effect of our Blackbeard, so might as well do that. They're then going to go for the Chi Shao, and I wait for them to activate their Chi Shao effect before I tag out into our list. This allows us to negate a monster effect, which is very nice. They do have the blackout, but they are going to go to battle and then realize, oh, I can't kill anything. Uh, they are then going to special summon out their Ecclesia, because of course they drew it off of Moye. That will bring out their Taya. Taya effect will activate. They will bring out a token, and then they will activate their, uh, their Adhara to add back the Moye. And then we are going to actually use the effect of our list in order to special summon out the Blackbeard at this point. Now, we didn't end up drawing a Plunder, so we can't actually use the effect to negate with our list. So I just special summon out the Blackbeard because why not? Um, I figured they would probably go for the Berserker Tenyi here instead of Baxia. Baxia does make more sense, but overall, uh, I just figured they might go for the Berserker Tenyi because it banishes, which would be pretty good here, but... Nope, they go for the Baxia. They're going to shuffle away the token as well as the Fateful Adventure for some reason. Um, okay. <laughs> They're then going to send the Vachetta off of their Taya. They're then going to use their um, Long One in order to special summon out itself as well as the token. And then bounce our first Blackbeard um, and then go into their... Changing. They're going to set their blackout and pass. So, all in all, we have to play through the banish of the uh, Changing, the Sword Soul, Chi Shao, Negate, and Blackout Popping 2. Now, however, I drew quite possibly the best draw in the deck, Terraforming, which allows us to get another Shipyard. So, if I don't activate the Shipyard effect here, we should be okay. So, first things first, I'm going to activate my Blackbeard. Uh, I actually thought a long time about this, uh, but we're going to activate the Blackbeard here. They're going to pop... Uh, I actually target my own Blackbeard. But they're going to pop the Liss and the Shipyard, which is quite possibly the worst decision, uh, because now we can just go for another Liss. They're going to activate their effect of the Sovereign, and they are going to then allow us... Uh, or, sorry. They're going to activate their Sovereign to Banish. I'm going to activate my Liss, which discarded uh, the Bluebeard, which we happen to draw. Um... And then, yeah, so we're going to try to negate the Sovereign here. They're going to activate their Changing, or their Chi Shao, in order to negate our list. And in response, we are going to activate our list to special summon out the Blackbeard. So our effect to negate their effect is negated. Holy crap, that was hard. But at this point, we are unimpeded. Uh, nothing really has anything that we can to deal with, so we're going to end up going for the Shipyard here, we're going to pitch the Water Enchantress, and then we're going to go for the Whitebeard. Now, at this point, I need to not lock myself into Plunders, because if I do, I will end up 
not being able to go into access code. Access code is basically the only way for us to right now be able to deal with the uh, changing. So what we need to do basically is go into Nightmare Unicorn, spin this card away, and then go into our um, into our access code. Actually, we don't even need to spin it away. We need to just like go Unicorn into access code at the very least because access code it can pop both of these guys and walk into this guy and clear up the board. So that is the plan here. I end up banishing the Water Enchantress just to get another card into rotation for our uh, access code. I, I end up, uh, you know, I might as well activate Faithful Adventure. It's, it's not doing anything. I'm going to go bl 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 I'm gonna go Blackbeard here in order for us to just get another monster into our graveyard. Since we didn't have um, uh, the Blackbeard in grave since it was banished. So then we go for the Nightmare Unicorn. We're going to normal summon our monster to go for access code. And then we are going to chain link one, the Whitebeard. Chain link two, the access code. Access code is now big enough in order to deal with the uh, Sovereign. Uh, we're going to special summon back the, or summon out the red beard off of our white beard. Uh, I then realize that instead of popping by, you know, banishing to give our Chang Ying friend a little bit more of a boost, I decided to wait till after the battle phase. So I pop one, realize I should go to battle, and then I pop the second one in main phase two. So there you go. We clean up the board. And at this point, I don't know what they could possibly top deck and they don't top deck it anyway. So good game. All right, and here we are going first once again, and this time we once again have the Adventure Engine and basically full combo. So I'm going to bait out the Ash Blossom with our Water Enchantress. Turns out it's a Maxi, so we're going to Ash their uh, Maxi, and then we're going to go for the Ride of Aramisir. Ride of Aramisir is going to allow us to go for the Fateful Adventure. We're going to search out the Wandering Griffin Rider, since we already have the Draco back. We're going to pitch the Draco back in order to add uh, or equip it to the Adventure token. We're then going to... Um, no, sorry, special out the Wandering Griffin. Normal summon out our Blue Beard in order to go for our Salomon Great Almirage, and then we will special summon out our Black Eyes by returning the Blue Beard. This not only gives us a discard in hand for something that we may tag out into, but it also gives us, of course, the Black Beard. So this is quite possibly one of the better setups that we have. The only thing that could possibly make it better is if we also had Toad on field. There are certain ways to do that, um, and Shipyard obviously would be helpful, or a booty set or something like that that it's a way difficult to get all of that set up but it is possible you do need a bit of a better hand uh which drawing the draco back wasn't enough uh turns out they have an eldritch so they are going to uh activate their faith or activate their eldritch to get rid of the faithful adventure why are people doing this i saw so many people hit the faithful adventure uh, you hit the token hit the token 100 percent of the time i have to respond to that otherwise i don't get my negate and it deals with the draco back hit the token Faithful Adventure isn't doing anything right now. Um, just hit the token. Uh, so I just let that go through, and I'm going to tag out into the list because they gave us a light. Fantastic. Now, here I make a little bit of a mistake. I mentioned earlier that I used the list effect to negate some Eldritch cards. Um, here, I could have utilized the uh, list effect to negate and destroy the Lord of the Heavenly Prison, which would have been a little bit better. And then I could have kept the Wandering Griffin Riders to shuffle it away for the effect of our uh, Eldritch. Don't know why I decided to do this the way that I did, but I did. Um, I also kind of wanted to... I, I lied. I do know why I did this this way. I wanted to bait out the Eldritch player because I'm almost certain that they don't know that this is a monster negate. So I kind of want them to just send this, the card away, um, which allows me to go for lists here. Um, but all in all, realistically, I should have done it the other way so that I gain the advantage off of the list by guaranteeing a draw. Anyway, we're going to shuffle back the Wandering Griffin Rider. They are going to activate their Eldritch to deal or to send away their Guardian of the Golden Land. I'm going to negate that to keep their monster off of the field. And then I'm also going to activate the Bluebeard in order to grab a or to discard one and draw one. I draw a cross out, which isn't going to do anything, um, but the Imperm wasn't either. So they're going to then banish two and proceed to my turn. So they're going to set the uh, Eldlixir of White Destiny as well as the Scarlet Sanguine. And for turn, we draw another Bluebeard, which is very nice for me. So they're going to bring out the Eldlich from the Grave as well as the Eldlich from the deck. And I'm going to tag out and they're... What in the world is Thunder of Ruler doing in this deck? Look, it's not the greatest of decks, but I understand the philosophy behind it. Anyway, we do have a dark target for us to go into, the Mowark, which is absolutely crazy here, because now I'm just going to banish their Eldritch. Goodbye, Eldritch. Um, we actually end up adding the booty here. I'm going to 
pitch the cross out because why not um and we draw into black eyes which is absolutely crazy again so we're gonna add the bluebeard back to our hand with the black eyes and special summon it then we're gonna pitch it off of the shipyard to grab up the white beard i'm gonna normal summon the white beard and now we can go into bran uh, activate the white beard effect in order to go into red beard. We're going to set one and pass. Now, this brand is not a quick effect, but that's a-okay. Uh, I'm just going to use the red beard here to kind of clear a zone. Um, and I'm actually going to put the mower here, uh, again, just to clear a zone for something like the booty. Anyway, they're going to set a whole bunch of cards and proceed to the end phase. I'm going to flip up the booty. We're going to change this guy to fire. And then we are going to go into white. Okay. Uh, we're going to bounce their Eldritch to force out interaction. Out comes the Conquistador, and at this point, I'm like, great. I drew a Plunder for turn, a Plunder card, so we're going to go Morik here in order to banish their Eldritch. Um, so we banish the Eldritch, which means their Conquistador ain't doing nothing, and we are going to go for the Bran here to also banish their Guardian, which just happens to be their biggest monster. It also allows us to search out the White Beard, and then we're going to uh, Synchro off into a second Bran, allowing us to Special Summon out the Red Beard, and at this point, this is lethal, um, and my opponent realizes that, but I could have also, um, it, yeah, as you see, like, I'm, I'm still going there, uh, but yeah, doesn't end up mattering. Good game. So, all in all, I really do enjoy this deck. It is very difficult to play. You do need to really work on uh, kind of manipulating your opponent and understanding, like, what they have in Grave, what you can utilize with those cards in Grave, and making sure that you're able to remember the exact effects where you're getting locked into Plunders, where you're not. Um, all of the Plunder locking effects are the Golden Hair Revive from Grave, the Black Eyes effect to add to special summon itself as well as add a card from grave as well as the white beard effect to special from deck so those three effects do lock you into plunders but other than that you are free to make anything um all in all though the deck is very fun it's very entertaining and uh it i mean who doesn't want to be a pirate am i right uh, yeah, I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy. If you did, a like is very much appreciated. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh!, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and remember to always stay frosty. Bye bye And a shout-out to the Frost Guard, my members, Ascended, and Yorda. Thank you guys so much for the support. Hope that you guys enjoy the content.